for is a worker specialist with 34 SPs, a hosting a company based in uh, Manchester. And she's going to tell us how to fix all websites. So, okay, it's a lot cozy in this room, isn't it? Okay, um, as Kami said, um, my name's Kaylee and I work for 34sp.com, which is a hosting company based in Manchester, and it always throws me off because I have to point down at this at WordCamp up here, and it's the only one where I do. Um, so yeah, um, part of my day-to-day -day job is answering support cases, helping people with their WordPress websites. And one of the more broader subjects uh, which comes up from time to time is fixing slowness on websites. And it's one of those really iffy topics because there's so many reasons it can happen. So I'm going to talk about some of the tools that we use to help people identify what is slowing their website down, um, how much attention we want to pay to certain things like that. And I want to offer some useful tools and tips of things that either you can use to try and help optimise your website or speak to your hosting provider about and hopefully take away something that might help you get your site a little bit faster. Um, so yeah, I'll jump into that. Okay, so we're going to start by talking about how we identify speed issues. Um, obviously you might go to your website and notice that it's not quite as fast as you would like it to be. Um, but we could do with a bit more information than that in most cases because just knowing that the site is slow doesn't really help us diagnose any kind of issue. So there's a few... This has a little bit of a delay. <laughs> um, there's a few tools that we use on the support team to kind of get an impression of what's going on. And one of the tools that um, me and my colleagues use quite frequently is um, the network tab in the Chrome browser. So Chrome's got a... Uh, if you right-click in Chrome on any web page, you can click Inspect and open up some useful tools um, for inspecting websites. And one of them is the network tab and what this does is um, when you click on the network tab in Chrome you can reload your page and it will give you a breakdown of how long it took the individual assets of that page to load. I'll show you what it looks like. It looks a little bit something like this. So I've, I'm on a website, I've opened up the network tab and I've just refreshed my website and it gives me this big list of assets for the site tells me how long my site, my page took to load, and then a bunch of things, things that were loaded on the site. And you can arrange these into, so you can arrange them into size and time is the one that I usually arrange them into, because that's how long it took that individual asset to load. So based on this example, I can see that the things that took the most time to load on my site appear to be things like CSS files, JavaScript files, and the odd image, which... This is kind of the thing we usually see, um, things like images slowing down your website isn't exactly a surprise, but um, it, if there's a specific asset that's taking a long time to load, um, usually the network tab will give us a good idea of where we can look for um, making some improvements. So that's a really useful tool. Um, Similarly to the network tab, there's other online tools you can use to get an idea of what's slowing down your website. Rather than investigating yourself um, using something like the Chrome network tab, you can use a website, and there's quite a few popular ones. There's GT Metrics, webpagetest.org, and things like Lighthouse, I'm going to show you. And these all Get, these all tell you what they think can be done to improve the speed on your website. And they're quite useful. They'll give you some stuff that you might not have even thought about. And they give you a lot of information as well. And you can try a few of them and you'll find that usually they'll give you the kind of... If something's slowing down your site, all, all of them will probably point to a similar kind of culprit. So I'm going to show an example of a report on the same website. So I've typed my website into Google's page, in, uh, Google's page speed insights here and it 
I click analyze, it goes away, it takes a look at my website and it comes back with a load of information. Um, the most prominent thing you can see once you go to Google page speed and put in your website is the big score at the top. Now, I got an 86, which to me doesn't seem so bad, but it's orange. It should be green. That's really upsetting. Things like that. Um, so straight away, I'm like, okay, I would quite like a green score. Um, if you scroll down on Google Page Speed Insights, um, it'll give you information on why it thinks is making your score not perfect. So for me, it was things like um, unoptimized CSS files, things that were being loaded and that weren't being used, um, not serving images in specific formats, and you can click the drop downs and it'll give you suggestions and what it thinks will be helpful for your website. And you can take that information away and maybe optimize some images, maybe install a plugin that which might fix the specific issue it's telling you about. So you can, you can run a test like this. Um, this is the Lighthouse test in Chrome, which gives you very similar kind of information. Um, this one also does metrics for things like your SEO and, and accessibility and things like that. Um, but again, if I look at, this is the same website. I've still got things, the same kind of information being displayed. Mm -hmm. So it still thinks the thing slowing down my website is the need to like minify my CSS or do something about that. Which, this is all the kind of information I already knew because I'd checked in my network tab in Chrome, I'd used the uh, Google Page Speed Insights. So having done a few tests, I can kind of get the impression, okay, if I do something about that, that might make a difference. Um, the one that I use the most often, sorry, I'm showing you a few of these, um, but this one is my favourite, and it's webpagetest.org. And the reason I like this one a bit better is because um, webpagetest.org, when you type in your website, it does three tests on it, it loads the page three times, and it'll work out its scores from that. And it also gives you, the, the information's a bit in my opinion, a bit more clear. So I've got my scores up here, which are very nice. I like this one. Obviously, I like this one best because it gave me all green. <laughs> um, but it also gives me some, in, some important metrics at the top here. So things like my um, time to first buy, um, the con content, filling up first content for paint, things like that. Um, so it's, yeah, there we go. It's also got little tabs with more information. So it's got things like a performance review checklist. So I can clearly see what assets on my site here that aren't optimized, that it thinks I could do with compressing. It's got, it's got really clear information for me compared to other, the other tools I feel. And it's got my waterfall here, which shows, gives me an impression of what is loading, being loaded in at what time. Uh, so web page test has quite a lot of lot of information and it's all in different sections which I just think that's that little bit nicer and clearer. Um, so with these scores, um, you might put your website in and find out that you've got this really low score and it can be a bit worrying because you're like, oh no, is my website really poorly optimised? And something and we get a lot of customers who'll run these kind of tests, um, they might have not quite the score they want and they're immediately thinking things like, Google are going to kick me off the search engine, I'm going to be re ranked really low, oh, this is terrible t type of stuff. Um, it, it's not as concerning in most cases as they should think it is because half the time we'll go to the website and we'll have a look and we'll be like, but your page loads in like half a second for me, um, are you having, is there a specific section of the site that's slow, is it slow for you? And they'll go, no, it's fast for me, but this has given me a really bad score. And basically, um, it's, there might be things going on on your website which make this score not as important as you think it is, because at the end of the day, if your site's loading fine and fast, then the score might not be everything. For example, um, around the page speed test on Amazon. And they got 36. So obviously my site 
is much better than Amazon and will be ranked at the top above Amazon. That's not the case at all. <laughs> um, but it gives you the kind of idea of how important this metric can be in some cases. I'm not saying it's not useful because it definitely gives you some insights on how you can improve certain aspects of your site. But if you're chasing after the perfect score, um, you might not really need to because as long as your page loads and everything loads fine, Amazon loads in everything on the page in like half a second, less than that, it's really fast. And it's super high ranked. There's nothing wrong with Amazon, um, despite what this score might say. So, so yeah, um, don't get too worried about the scores is the point. Use them as more kind of helpful guidelines on how you can speed up your website. Um, a lot of people get kind of hung up on the time to first bite metric as well. And I'm just going to talk about that and some uh, and the first content full pane and what these metrics are and why they're important. So the time to first bite is when you're, you first make a request to the server. It's when you get that initial response. So it's how long the server takes to respond, which is an important metric. Um, but arguably, the more important metric I, w I would say is the first contentful paint because what this is, this is when you actually start receiving something f in the browser. So you start actually seeing something visual on the website. So like your images, your CSS, it's, that's the more user-based metric. So your time to first byte might be two seconds, but then straight after that, you've got everything else loading. If your first contentful paint is a lot longer than your time to first byte, then the user experience isn't very good because it means that the actual page is taking quite a while to load. So these are the two metrics that are quite important once you're looking at what's being loaded onto the page and what the user's experience is. Um, now that we've gone through a few tools and we've got an idea of what's slowing down our website potentially, um, I'm going to go through a few um, easy optimization tips that anyone can do. Um, just some little bits, uh, things you can do, things you can talk to your host about and yeah, hopefully uh, get the site up to a bit of a higher score, but not so high that <laughs> um, So based off my website, uh, the big speed culprits that I saw, and this is usually the kind of case that we'll see um, when we run this test on most websites. Um, things like unoptimized images. Images count for a lot of slow, slow down on websites. That's not a surprise. They're usually the biggest assets on the site. Um, large JavaScript files and CSS files. And one that comes up that on when I've been talking to customers is um, external resources being loaded into the site. So you'll have your website. Or it might be loading a video from another website, or it might be loading a font from somewhere. Um, so basically, your website is also relying on this other server to serve something before it will load properly, and that can affect your score quite a bit. So with something like that, ideally you'd be loading in your assets on your actual website. So just going to talk about some easy image optimization plugins. So Maybe you've not thought about optimizing your images, making them smaller. Um, there's many plugins that can do this for you. Um, some of the popular ones are Jetpack's Photon. It might be a bit controversial because not everyone likes Jetpack because it has a lot of other features, which um, sometimes people think might slow it down a little bit. Um, but it has a image optimization tool where you can um, use their C uh, Jetpack CDN to serve the images for you. Um, there's WP Smush, which compresses your images, and one of the ones I see most often and quite like is the OO Image Optimizer plugin, because this one you can set your own compression settings, you can tell it what you want it to do. You can go back and op apply all those optimization options to your current uploads, and then it'll do it going forward for new uploads. So it's quite a popular one. Um, you want to talk to your hosting provider about potentially serving WebP images. Um, these are new formats of images that are more optimised for the web. Um, they're compressed 
a bit better and they're designed to make the web run faster. And speak to your hosting provider because they can potentially help you set up WebP images loading onto your website. So you want to find out a bit more about things like that as well. Um, if you want to do some image optimization before you actually get them on your website, there's some tools here that I've used before. My favorite one's the one at the top, which is compressor.io. And basically you just upload the image to it and it gives you a more compressed version of it. It removes things like metadata, um, it, do, it does lossy and lossless compression. So um, basically lossy compression will affect the image quality a bit more, but have a much larger file reduction. And uh, lossless compression is the opposite. It'll keep the quality of the image, but have a little bit of a less um, file size reduction. Anyway, I quite like running my images through that because it's quite a quick and easy tool to use. Of course, you can also do the old just resize your images before you upload them and upload reasonably sized images for the web. Um, most websites aren't usually serving all their images at 2,000 pixels wide. So, yeah, just a few easy ways you can optimise your images. And if you're, you haven't been doing this, it'll make a big difference. Um, the other big culprit that came up on my website once I was getting my reports was they need to minify my JavaScript and CSS. And this is really easy to do with a plugin as well. So uh, what these do is uh, you can get a plugin which takes your CSS file. And if you've ever wrote CSS, you'll know you make it, the files look really pretty because they're all li in, lined down all the different options and they look really nice. But this basically just um, shrinks them all down into like one line of code and removes all the white space from them, resulting in a smaller file. And it's just a really easy way to get a little bit of load down on the site. So there's a few plugins that can do this. Some, some themes do this as well. Um, but the plugins that I've seen are Auto Optimize, WP Super Minify, and WP Fastest Cache will all do this. And there's plenty of other plugins that will do this as well. Um, something you want to talk to your hosting provider about is making sure that your traffic is being served over HTTP2. So uh, HTTP2 is an upgrade to the current HTTP protocol, which um, when you visit a website, um, you're requesting packets from that website and they're sending them one after another, opening that connection back and forth. This is kind of a hard, <laughs> hard one to explain properly. But um, the difference with HTTP2 is when you open that first request, it keeps the stream open, so more, so everything keeps going, uh, keeps being transferred, and it's faster for that reason. So you want your hosting to be giving you this <coughs> service. Um, it needs an SSL to work, which is also good because everyone should be having an SSL, and it also kind of gets rid of that myth that SSL slow your site down, <laughs> because if you've got an SSL and HTTP2 running because of that. Your site is faster than when it didn't have the SSL. And it's more secure, which is great. And Google does like SSL, so um, every site should have an SSL, basically. <laughs> um, another popular way of reducing site load time is to set up caching. And caching is a bit... Caching is awesome, but it's also really not awesome. <laughs> Because um, any, what caching does is it <laughs> distract. Um, caching rather than every time you load up a web page um, and you get the individual assets and you load up the page, caching kind of st it takes the image of the full page and stores it in memory. So when you visit the website, if it's cached, it'll just whip it out of memory and display it faster. Um, now, that's really handy, but it can be a little bit confusing sometimes because if you're developing a website and you make a change, um, then you go back to the website. Sometimes you find things like, oh, the change has disappeared, things like that. That's usually because the cache hasn't been flushed, things like that. So you do have to be a little bit careful with it. Most caching 
stuff will not affect the logged in user and it's more something the um, logged out user will experience but there's two ways you can ca- you can manage caching your hosting provider might prefer might provide server level caching um, so you might want to speak to them about whether or not they are doing that because if your hosting provider is already handling your cache for your website um, if you add something like a plugin you can have two caches and that can get things really confusing um, if you don't already have caching though, you can set up with a plugin. And these are three of the popular ones, so W3 Total Cache, WP Rocket and WP Fastest Cache. And yeah, because because of how this works and stores the web page in memory, it'll speed up your website and it's really good. Um, so yeah, it's worth speaking to your hosting provider about which <laughs> option's best for you and whether or not they're already providing you with it. Um, I'm just going to go through some other reasons why a website might be slow, because these are the kind of usual things we see and easy optimization tips that anyone can do. But your website might have a great score and be more or less fine all the time. But there's some other instances where the site's going slow and the issue isn't quite as clear. So I'm just going to go through some problems that might be the case and what we can do about them. So, uh, because this is WordPress, one of the main reasons the site might be going a little bit slower than we would want it to is because um, it might have too many plugins. When I say too many plugins, um, having a lot of plugins isn't always a bad thing, but um, from my experience working with WordPress support quite a bit, um, we'll see a a lot of sites with a lot of plugins, and there'll be instances where half the plugins are disabled um, they're not kept up to date because there's so many plugins and they're not needed so they're not kept up to date um, so you can get your site into a little bit of a load mess because just because there's so many plugins installed for no no real good reason um, if you've got a lot of disabled plugins as well they usually do have some sort of data still on the site that might be being loaded in and causing problems so things like database table entries making your database massive things like that if you've got a lot of them just sitting there dormant um, it's a really easy fix though because the fix is to just make sure that your plugins are being regularly updated um, get rid of ones that you're not using but actually delete them don't just disable them and leave them on the site for forever if you're not using the plugin, there's no point in having it. And if you do decide you need it again, you can just reinstall it. Um, so, yeah, just do regular plugin audits. Um, make sure that the plugins you are using are being kept up to date as well, because um, one of the things with plugins that could be a problem is the code might be really out of date for a plugin that's not been updated in several years. Um, that might be the case. The plugin might be fine uh, from the get-go as well. But yeah, just make sure that the plugins on your site are the ones that you actually need, and it'll be a lot better for you. Um, another thing that slows down sites, unrelated to anything we've been through, is denial of service attacks. And this is when um, another computer, a bot, things like that, will make lots of requests to your website in quick succession so for example a script or robot trying to log into your wordpress admin really fast brute force attacks where they're just trying to guess the password and all that all those guesses in quick succession will run up your memory and making your site slow so things like this um can be a little less obvious because you, most of the time you just see the end result where the website is really slow and you can't see this person or bot or whatever trying to log in. Um, Usually you can report something like this to your hosting (coughs) provider, they'll check your access logs and they'll find out why that's happening and find out that that's the case. Um, It's another one that's not too difficult to kind of sort out. In most cases your hosting provider's probably got you set up with some sort of protection for this. So something like fail to ban on the server, which will ban IP addresses after they try to do dodgy requests a few too many times. Um, You can install a plugin called Limit Login Attempts, which does the same thing for the login page. And you can set up things like um, HC access rules, 
on your website which you can target specific files and limit the access to them. So that's the kind of thing you can do to prevent this kind of problem. And it might be something to talk to your hosting provider about, but um, you can install plugins which will take a look as well. And the security plugins like WordFence and things like that, which have these kind of tools in them. So you can look into stuff like that for uh, DDoS attacks. Um, the worst reason your site might be slow is that it might be hacked. And hopefully this is not the case because this is the worst case scenario and it really sucks when your site's been hacked. Um, sometimes it's not very obvious that your site's been hacked. Um, you might just find that it's slow one day, it might not be slow at all. But this is one of the reasons why your site could be slow. And there's not really a great amount that can be done about it other than cleaning up the hack. Um, so this is why taking backups is important. Um, hacks can slow down your website by doing things like installing scripts on your website which are attacking other sites, they use up a lot of memory, they can be sending out spam mail. So um, it's w one of those possibilities and the solution is either to restore from a backup when the site wasn't hacked, but even then the vulnerability could still exist. So it's best speaking to someone about getting a proper clean up on your website getting fresh ver versions of your plugins installed where the hack is definitely not present and going through that process. This is the worst case scenario and hopefully that's not why anyone's site is slow because it's a real pain when your site's hacked. Um, and another thing to talk to your host about is what kind of hosting you're on. Um, this is fairly straightforward. So um, with with more, quite a lot of websites, they might be using either shared hosting or VPS-based hosting. And on shared hosting, you're in a server space with other clients' websites. So there's this server and all these websites are on it, um, including your website. And you don't really know these other websites that you're sharing the server space with. Um, one of them might be a really busy shop website that probably should be on its own hosting, but because shared hosting is usually that bit cheaper, quite a lot of people go for it. And if your site's quite, if the speed of your website is quite critical to your business, then you don't want these other websites on the server taking up all that memory, the resource on the resources on the server. So what you can do is you can switch to VPS based hosting and that server space, which you were sharing a bunch of websites with, um, now you're in your own container space, you've got your own resources that are specifically for your website and no other website can take uh, take up some of the memory and not let you have it so if your if speed is really important to your website you definitely want to be looking at containerized vps based hosting and usually it's not <coughs> as dear as you might think um so yeah that's definitely one of the better options for keeping your site up uh, quite fast regular. Um, and finally, um, so because solving speed issues is quite difficult, because um, there's so many different reasons it can happen, so if, you, if you're using a hosting provider with a support line, there's useful details that you can get for them to help them kind of help you figure out what's going on. Um, a lot of the time it's just a case of going through page speed tests and we can give advice on what kind of things are slowing down your website that you can do. But when it's that little bit less clear, when something a bit weird is going on, there's some useful information that you can grab for us or make note of. And usually the kind of information that helps identify speed issues is the time the slowdown happened. So if it's not a constant thing, if your site slows down every day at 3 a.m. for some weird reason, um, that's definitely useful to us because we can check things like uh, error logs, access logs, see if there was anything running on the server at that time, see if there was issues on the host side at that time. Um, so knowing when the issue happens is really important. Um, it might be happening on a specific section of the website. Maybe that section of the website only has things like, maybe it's your videos page which is particularly slow, which might point to the issue. Things like that might be helpful. Um, 
can we replicate the issue is usually the really helpful one because if we can see the same issue you're having it helps us go away and kind of keep trying things and help identify where the issue is coming from and um, yeah if you can take away as much information about unclear speed issues as you can it really helps your hosting provider provide you with the assistance you need to get back up to speed and um, yeah hopefully that was helpful <laughs> Um, it differs for every website because um, because based on your WordPress theme, you might have different kind of thumbnail sizes that, and your images might be being served at different at different sizes on different parts of your website. Uh, when you upload an image to WordPress, it usually divides them up into those thumbnail sizes. Um, so there's no kind of set you should be uploading at this size. Uh, you want to make sure that your themes doing the thumbnails right and not say you don't want like a 2000 pixel image but it's actually on the website being served at 100 pixels wide there's no point in having that you just have the smaller image on the website uploaded and being served how do these uh, image optimization uh, things that you told us about compare with uh, big programs like adobe you know, photoshop and lightroom which you know, have service tables for, for web or yeah, um, as long as you're doing something, I imagine that's perfectly fine. You can always try taking the image that you've optimised yourself and seeing what something like Compressor.io can add to it, um, because I'm not sure if Photoshop removes things like the metadata from the picture and things like that. And I'm not sure if it's helpful for what to you, sometimes you would, some you would, some you wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd say give it a try, but as long as you're doing something, it's a lot better than doing nothing. If you're uploading, la especially things like large photography website type images. Uh, have you got any tips on optimising video? Uh, not really. My kind of advice would be to serve it from YouTube. <laughs> because um, chances are YouTube's server or whatever video streaming service you're using is probably a lot faster and optimized for serving videos because videos are really huge and yeah serving them from your host server is usually not the best option in most cases uh, let's say the issue is slow plugins but this is going to cry it requires all of the plugins even the ones that have been determined to be small what's the answer to that <laughs> Oh, the, um, I'm trying to think of a better reply than tell your client off. <laughs> um, oh, I heard something. Um, honestly, I'm not too. If they don't want to get rid of the plugin, maybe you can offer alternatives. Um, but yeah, if you found a specific plugin is slowing down the website. The plugin's slowing down the website. I don't know if you can contact the developer and get them to do anything about that. Um, but when the culprit is clear, there's not a lot you can do, especially if they refuse to get rid of it. So, sadly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish there was a, oh, press this button and it'll just make the crap plugin not crap. <laughs> Ask, um, how do you know if your site is secured or HTTP2 or not? I mean, without asking your hosting provider. It's a way of seeing that somehow. It's already on SSL. Oh, that's a good question. Network tab. Network tab. <laughs> uh, do you know where it shows you that? Yeah, in the network. Oh, does it just show? The network screen. It's oh, the let's go back. Maybe oh, it's shown me. Yeah, I'll be on the way Because usually that's the kind of thing we check on the server side. So Here. let's have a look. 
One of those columns. One of these columns will tell you, apparently. Yeah, you haven't got it. <laughs> typically, but yeah, one of those tabs. Uh, if, if you go along, hopefully it should tell you. Yeah. I'd try and get an example, but we don't have it in it. Mm-hmm. Just like H2. H2, right. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> just one more question. If, yeah. you can, if you don't think so, that's a problem. If you don't have, um, if you check the minify, any CSS minification, JavaScript, you checked all that, and you want to, to cut up maybe PHP or do something on the server side, and the host said, well, that's impossible. Would you just call it, it as a host? The, sorry, the host said what's well, impossible. On the PHP side, right? If you want to say, like, well, you read an interesting document, so well, I'd like to put varnish in my thing or something similar to that. I'd like to accelerate the. Oh, I see. And your host doesn't say, so, well, that's not something really possible, would you? It, well, it depends on what kind of hosting you're on, because m- in most cases, if you're on shared hosting, they probably won't do that for you because. It might affect other websites on the server, but if you're if you're on VPS based hosting, some of them will install certain modules and things like that for Can you. Do that, yeah. um, potentially, obviously, I can't speak for what hosting package you're on and but you're, you're stuff. On it depends on what you're after. If you, our WordPress hosting has a bunch of cool optimization stuff on it, but <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, most of our VPS based hosting, we can make certain customizations that customers want. Um, and I, I would assume that's a similar case for most places. As long as you're, it's not affecting other people's websites who potentially might not want it. You have to be a standalone server. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd be surprised if they installed anything you wanted on shared hosting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much.